Well, the McLeod name was massive in Adelaide and he was one of the superstars in, in the States. McLeod, chance, spins it around, that's as good as it gets! When I asked him for his jumper, I wanted to wear it, you know, for the fact that I just idolised him. Training and, and playing with him for that amount of years and watching him growing up, he was always someone I looked up to and I thought about it for a while and finally got the guts to go ask him about it. He just said, oh, I'd, I'd be honoured for you to wear it. Every time I pull on the Guernsey, it's written all over my locker, you know, what sort of player he was and, and I know what sort of person he is, so... It's just a thrill and very proud. One of those players who could turn a game off his own boot, either with his explosive speed or off half-back. And with the left foot, kick the lifting goal. One of the most skillful players I've ever seen and, and been involved with. He always seemed to do it when uh, the game was on the line and he just loved having the ball in his hands because he's usually going to make the right decision. McLeod comes in, picks up the ball, shot up, goal! The moment that probably stands out to me, game against Collingwood in the last quarter, He's just 50 metres out on the boundary, on his left foot, kicked an amazing goal. And ball to the excitement machine, McLeod. Left foot goal! Oh, don't tell He's me! He's a superstar! Don't tell me! Oh. Something I'll never forget, just sort of showed the classy sort of player that he is. To Marsh, releases the exciting McLeod from 40 metres out and finishes the job! Here's another goal, McLeod, the magic man, bangs it through. McLeod, this is dangerous. He's a very widely respected player. And, you know, I've seen a lot of interviews over the years where other guys from other clubs have said he was my favourite player and, and things like that, and, or he was the hardest player I ever had to play on. And I can understand why he would be. He never seemed to be able to stop him. He always had something new in his trick bag. And the Norm Smith medalist is Andrew McLeod of Adelaide. He was always a role model for myself and for any young player coming through and it's just something for young guys to, to look at, for someone of his profile to be, be so humble. When I pull on the number 23 each week, I feel very honoured and I just feel as though I carry a bit of what Andrew brought you know, with that number each week. McLeod tries to burst around the boundary, it's still in, oh, dances around. Square. There'll never be another Andrew McLeod. The legacy that Andrew leaves, he's just an absolute superstar player. He was one who worked as hard as he could, got everything out of himself. He was always there to help guys like me out as well. I'll be forever thankful for the impact he had on me. Hey, tell me, Andrew, when notification of this arrived, what did you go through? What were your emotions? Um, yeah, it, was, uh, it was quite interesting. I was, uh, I was heading out the, the door with my wife and um, I can't remember where we were going and um, something caught my eye in the, in the letterbox so I sort of marched over and grabbed it and um, I get a lot of mail from the AFL being a, um, a you know, 300 game player and um, I looked at the letter and I saw Tony Peake's name on the back and I went Geez, um, I don't often get mail from Tony Peake, so uh, <laughs> something's going on. And walk back to the car, and uh, my wife Rachel was sitting in the in the passenger seat, and um, I handed her the, the letter and and said, um, "You better open this uh, because uh, if I do, uh, I think I'm going to cry." So um, I got her open it, and she was like, "What are you going to cry for?" You know, like. What's, what's going on? And I said, well, have a look at the letter. Um, and I, no, duh, Tony <laughs> P. And um, yeah, she, uh, she opened the letter and uh, started reading it. And then you know, for about, I guess it's like a bit like when you're in the, when the premiership, that um, first 15 seconds, um, just the emotion of it. And all these thoughts went through my head, um, freaked out. It was a couple of tears. And um, yeah, I, was, I just was like, 
I've got to ring my dad. Then after that, after that emotion had settled down, I was like, whew, how good is this? Yes. <laughs> your football journey actually goes back through the generations. The genesis is your great-grandfather. Yeah, it is, and uh, my, my great-grandfather was one of the um, first Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander players to, um, to be registered to play, uh, you know, in, in the Territory. Uh, back in the, in the early 1900s, um, his, his name, well, my family name, the Armat name, is, um, is uh, blazing on the, on the uh, entrance gates at TIO Stadium. Um, it's named after my great-grandfather, so um, I guess it was inevitable that I was going to play footy. You're a beautiful footballer to watch, and I don't doubt it was exhilarating to play. Can you put us inside it when it, when it all lined up for you? Was it like playing the game in slow motion? Um, yeah, it was in certain times and it's one of those things I get, I think as a footballer you love to be able to bottle those moments when you, when you could and there were certain periods in my career that, um, and, and games and moments where everything was in slow motion um, and I think that's when, for me it's when I played my best football. Uh, I was always, I felt like... Um, Felt like I was one step ahead all the time, and I could read the play, and I knew where the ball was going to go. And those two grand finals, which are such a part of the folklore of your career, two Norm Smith medals, in playing in front of 100,000 people, which would have been more than the whole population of where you grew up. How do you reflect on, on those two memorable days? Yeah, I was never really nervous when I played in the, in the GFs. Um, I was quite comfortable because, like I said, about you know, playing those games. I'd played 100 grand finals in my mum's lounge room and, you know, I'd been there before, so I knew what to expect, sort of. <laughs> but, um, but until that moment and then you walk out onto the MCG and there's nearly 100,000 people and the first thing I did was go, wow, there's, there's more people here than where I live, than where I come from, you know, and that was the most scary thing. And then it was like, oh, what a bloody say. Oh, yep, 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 you've got to do a, you know, soak it all up and um, embrace it and, and don't get caught in a moment. But, yeah, it was just the fantastic days and, you know, like, you go out there and... and for me, as a, and the other thing too was the pressure I, I always felt because the only two guys that had ever played in the grand final before me, one was named Morris Rioli, one was named Michael Long, and they both won Norm Smith medals. Yep. So I sort of felt that pressure a little bit, um, but you know, I think it was, it was nice about to embrace it and think, well, you know, they're two of my great idols growing up. Um, how good would it be to be able to emulate that? And emulated you did. You've left us with so many great memories. Maybe a thank you or two as you finish. Um, yeah, I would. Um, yeah, I think I better thank my wife first because um, she's a, an integral part of uh, obviously my life. And from growing up in, in Catherine and going to, uh, sorry in Darwin and going to school together, um, you know, as a, as a young bloke, and we embarked on this dream. I was a bit wet behind the ears. Didn't know what was going to happen um, and a bit like some of the other guys said I just wanted to play one game. Also to uh, my brother who's not here, um, uh, I wish he was here but my brother is one of those people that puts things into perspective a lot and um, when I told him I was getting inducted into the Hall of Fame he said I already thought you were there. <laughs> um, to the game of football itself, um, along with my family and my friends, I'm forever indebted. Thank you.